subscribe to feminism in india for your dose of intersectional feminist content and make sure to hit the bell icon to get all the latest updates This tune was recorded almost a century ago. The first gramophone recording to be made on Indian soil, recorded by a woman who loved her jewels and threw parties for her cats, recorded by the most famous tawaif of British India. Today we delve into the story of India's gramophone girl, Gohar Jaan. Gohar Jaan was born as Eileen Angelina Yevard in Azamgarh in 1873. Her parents separated when she was around 6 years old after which she moved to Banaras with her mother. Music and dance seemed to run in Gohar Jaan's veins as even her mother was a famous courtesan and quickly they became very famous among the royal circles of Banaras. Subsequently they moved to Calcutta and established themselves in the court of Nawab Wajid Ali Shah who himself was an excellent musician and lyricist. In a musical journey that may well have changed the landscape of Indian classical music, Gohar Jaan recorded up to 600 songs in over 10 languages including English, French and Pashto. She did not restrict herself to one form of song and was equally skilled in Thrupad as well as in Thumri, Kajri, Tarana, Rabindra Sangeet and Bhajan. In 1902 the British Gramophone Company was on a 6 week long exercise of recording music of the local artists. The American sound engineer Fred Gaisberg gave Gohar Jaan the opportunity to record for their 78 RPM disc and thus she became the first recording artist in the subcontinent and was bestowed with the title The Gramophone Girl. As Gohar Jaan recorded in that makeshift gramophone studio in a hotel room of Calcutta, Indian classical music took a giant leap forward. From the confines of the salons and soirees, Indian classical music was transported right into the homes of the common people. Gohar Jaan became the first commercially recorded artist of the subcontinent. In 1903, Gohar Jaan's records started appearing in Indian markets and were in great demand. She became so famous that when King George visited India for the Delhi Darbar, Gohar Jaan was invited to Delhi to sing for him. But what truly set Gohar Jaan apart was her feisty nature and lavish lifestyle. It is said that she once threw a party when her cat gave birth to a litter. Flouting British government rules and paying a daily fine of rupees 1000, she drove around the thoroughfares of Calcutta in her costly open carriage driven by four horses. Her photos appeared on picture postcards and even on matchboxes made in Austria. As illustrious as her life had been, perhaps the end was just as dark. Gohar Jaan's wealth dwindled as she was embroiled in bitter legal battles with several relatives over the money she had earned through her work. As a wife, Gohar Jaan had also been at the receiving end of sexual exploitation many times. Towards the later part of her life when she was in Mysore, She was invited by Maharaja Nalwadi Krishnaraj Wodeyar as a state guest and court musician. However, by then she had lost the will and strength. And on 17 January 1930, she took her last breath, lonely and with no one at her bedside. Like many pioneering women of India, Gohar Jaan's story was also largely kept out of our history books for a very long time. However, some efforts are being made to revive her art. In 2010, author Vikram Sampath published a book about her life titled My Name is Gohar Jaan. Gohar Jaan's decision to take classical music outside of darbars and into recording studios is the reason we can all enjoy classical music to this day. She ended all her records with the signature My Name is Gohar Jaan. And indeed, the name of this doyen is now irrevocably etched into the halls of Indian classical music. <laughs>